Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here and welcome to another Daily Fix. So today, again, as usual, we have got a 1466. Oh, I do love these machines. I mean, they're great machines. If you watch the latest Lewis Rossman, which MacBook I recommend, where he secretly reveals his loves of MacBook. Well, you'll get to see that the 1466 is high on his list along with the A1502, which is also one of my preferences. Anyway, this one has come in showing symptoms of uh, it will give you charge, but it just won't power up. So hopefully it's nothing too complicated, but you never can quite tell with this. Best thing we can do, open it up, have a look, and see how we go. Alright, let's get into this. Find the right screwdriver. There we go. A little pentalobe. I suspect these 1466s will still remain very popular for another couple of years. I mean, there really isn't a lot of reason to change them uh, to a newer model. But the only real problem is probably going to be the shortage of the SSD drives, given that they're the beloved 12 plus 16 interface model, which is both very expensive and probably in diminishing supply and we're getting a lot of the Toshiba controller ones dying on us all right let's have a look first impressions generally a bit dusty unfortunately it's got the non-Toshiba drive in there bit of dust so hmm, if it's doing the no boot it could be a piece of crap somewhere on the other side of the board. Let me look at this, see if we've got any blow-in of corrosion. We've got a little bit of corrosion showing around the middle here. So it'll be around this area here. A little bit over here. Yeah, there's, there's bits and pieces. It's nothing substantial, but we only need one little piece to be in the wrong place. And it's good night board. Now, this has actually been dropped or something, or... I just noticed that's split and broken. I think what technicians love about the 1466 is that it's a very easy model to do work on in terms of there's no complicated overlapping of parts or uh, assemblies. It's just uh, it's an excellent point of design they didn't try to make it overly complicated they just said here you go, these are the parts you need to access go forth and repair so I'd definitely say the engineers were in charge on this one and not the uh, not the marketing department or the accounts I suppose really I should power it up and see what it does to it's very easy to just jump into these projects not thinking okay so I got green ooh we got a fan spin now this is the 3437 so it should actually power down on that but it's not it's just non-stop so oh there we go mm -hmm, didn't get i wonder if we've got clock damage sometimes the rtc when it dies or it gets damage it can do that so what happens is the board starts up and it's waiting around to get some more instructions and gets nothing so it goes I'll oh, stuff it and just shuts down okay let's get this one out there's a corrosion point right there mm, I think I see something Let's get this stuff out of the way. Mm. 
Let's go for a dive. Yeah, where was it? There. There we go. Rim area. Interesting. Don't normally get that. Well, that could explain it too. But normally I'd expect some beeps or something. Let's brush this off. There's some sub sort of standard looking stuff around here. There's a lot of yeah, and there we go. There's that clock area that's gone blown on us. Okay, so it's actually the BIOS line. I think that was yeah, one of the ITC BIOS lines. All right, so that will probably be why we're not booting properly at this point. But ah, and explains now when I look at the note. I remember now that the person complained that there were artifacts on the screen prior to it crashing. So the artifacts on the screen would be due to this because the uh, memory here is also holding the memory for the graphics chip. So that will be causing the artifacts and this here will be causing probably the lack of boot. So we're at two faults. And I'm not sure which one was the primary that stopped it coming up for good now. Uh, I might put it onto this because it should be booting but then with the memory it would just have more issues and such. Very interesting. That's going to be fun getting it in and out. Fortunately these RAM chips are not underfilled so it's not a problem at all. Just have plenty of flux. Alright so that's our two main faults. And I'm just going to keep looking around. Because if there's two, what's to say there isn't three? It's certainly, it, this is definitely going to be an ultrasonic one. There's areas of slightly questionable so SMC up. Uh, backlight ball looks fine. You know, let's flux and boil this one out. And get that replaced. Not real sure of. It's a shame we're going to melt this. Quite careful, we don't knock those memory chips. Go. Okay. I'm fairly sure that cap might not have been shorted, but it would have been certainly giving trouble. So let's check our rail continuity. Uh, point two eight. That's pretty good. And this one here, that's good too. So my guess is the cap was probably just becoming quite marginal. We have a test to see what it is like. Oh, see, it's not shorted, but it would have been marginal, and that would have created instability. So I guess we'll uh, put a replacement on. So we're just going to replace that cap, we'll grab that cap and put it on the other board. So while we all fall back to getting donors from places like AliExpress, it is also good to have donors from your own local dead boards if you can, because they will have these extra parts that normally get taken off by the stores that offer them from AliExpress and such. I mean obviously the AliExpress people there doing what they do because they are selling the memory chips as new in another part of their store. Sometimes they're nice enough to put the new in quotes 
other times they just lie out right to your face and say, yeah, it's totally new. It's like GPUs. Okay. Shame we had to melt that. Oh well. Alright, let's get over to the clock area. Hmm. Have a look at what that resistor is actually for. So, the one in question is 6101. And that's a right protect pull up. It'll probably come off, but we're going to flux and boil this just to see how the whole area behaves. And so I can use up this excess flux that keeps oozing out of the tip. Now I think it's probably best I just remove that and inspect the track underneath. Okay, they're all looking a bit dodgy, but they do appear to be intact. We just need to scrape off some of this pretty orange corrosion. This one here seems fine, but again, I might just put solder over them. Yeah, the corrosion's been a little bit sneaky there. We'll use our trusty Zacto knife. Yeah, it's looking good. Touch these pads up and that yeah, should be put our new resistor back down. Uh, get that one from our donor, this one here. Looks like I've worked this board hard in the past trying to find a fault. I guess I didn't find it. Oh, that's right, this one's got the dead PCH. I definitely took too long with that one with the PCH, you should just pop the uh, heat sink off and have a look. Ah, tombstoning on me. There you go. Well, there's a chance this might run now. A chance. Fingers crossed, we'll now get a boot with CPU activity. Hmm, okay, fan spin, this should go down, come on. Oh no, not good, not good. You come back up. You do it one more time. Come back up again. Ah, we actually have a win. This is working. And we're going up to full spin now and still CPU activity, so we're going to plug this into the chassis and see that it does behave properly. It's looking good, but I do like to confirm. Nothing quite so much fun as calling up a customer and saying, hey, I've got your machine running, it's all booting and everything now, and you haven't done the full check with everything installed, and then <laughs> they turn up, particularly if they've had to travel for a bit, and they turn up to collect their machine and you go, oh, Look at that, that doesn't work properly. Oops. That's one surefire way to get a bad customer on your back. I should say a good customer turned bad because of your stuff up. I think a few too many people look at the whole thing and go, look, it spin, it spins the fan. It's ready to go. It's a bit like programmers who say, it compiles, ship it. So, okay, that is a bit of a joke, really, for programmers, but 
the mentality is much the same. We should check the charge too on this to make sure it's all good on the ISL side. It's interesting that the physical damage here doesn't seem to pertain to anything with what was wrong originally. That was just a bit of bad luck, the daily running. Let's see, here we go. Well, you look at that. It's working. Fantastic. Well, that was a nice one to have because it was uh, more than just a dead, dead simple fault. Uh, there was uh, multiple different faults there. Well, okay, two. But um, this is an ideal sort of repair to have because it comes in, the fix is obvious, there's a distinct cause for it. You get it fixed up, it works properly, and there's no sort of like, oh, you know, there's a bit of a glitch there that plays in the back of your mind because you're thinking, yeah, that's going to come up later. It's not just a accidental glitch just by bad luck or anything. That's something that I haven't yet fixed. Those sort of faults just drive me nuts and um, you know no matter how many times you try to push it out of the back of your mind they do tend to come back be it a week later or three months later and you know it's because it was that thing that you just couldn't pin down originally so thank you very much for watching we're glad to get that one fixed i'm sure the customer's going to be very happy of course because they're going to get their macbook back and it's not going to cost them another you know 1600 dollars or whatever to get the latest one which they probably don't even want so thank you all for watching you'll take care i'll see you next time